church hurt can be devastating. I've seen it utterly destroy the lives of God-fearing people. And I know what it's like because I myself have experienced the devastating, overwhelming pain of church hurt. It's very, very real. And it comes from many directions. Some people are hurt directly by the pastor. Maybe it was control. Maybe it was rejection. Maybe it was manipulation. Other people are hurt by brothers and sisters in the church who were not there for them when they needed them most. Some people are hurt in cultish churches. They're not just controlling, they're dominating. There are many ways in which church hurt comes, but I'm here to tell you today. God sent me to tell you that you can overcome church hurt. You don't have to be a victim of church hurt. As a matter of fact, you are a victor and I decree and declare right now that you shall overcome the pain of church hurt. I know what it's like. It can be tormenting. It can be deeply grieving. Many times you see people one way and you find out they're another way. They've got two faces, sometimes three or four faces. But God doesn't want you to stay down and out. God wants you to run to him in prayer, cry out to his generous spirit for the healing that you need so that you can succeed at the highest levels in your spiritual life. Because if we stay wounded, we have a continual open door of attack for the enemy. If we stay wounded, then we make ourselves miserable. When Jesus died to set us free, he came to heal the brokenhearted. So today we're going to pray. And some of you that have been hurting for many years, or some of you just got hurt yesterday in the church, we're not going to let the enemy win. We're going to press in to healing. We're going to press in to cleansing. We're going to press in to freedom. This is Jennifer LeClaire, and this is Mornings with the Holy Spirit, pressing in daily to the power and presence of God. Let me just prophesy to you, something good is going to happen to you today. I'm coming to you live from South Florida. Our church, Awakening House of Prayer, is here, and I'm there on Sundays preaching, praying, prophesying, and casting out devils. I'd love for you to stop by at one of our three services on Sundays. You can watch online at ahop.online. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Sears Invitational. We have five seats left. You can also watch online four classes, Q&A, Sears exercises, Sears impartation service, and more. School uh, is at globalpropheticcenter.com slash Sears. Today, before we get started, drop those hashtags for me. Come on in and shout out, share. Let me know where you're coming in from, what city, what nation. Then drop those hashtags, hashtag Jennifer LeClaire, hashtag Mornings with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to read today from the original devotional, Mornings with the Holy Spirit, as we kick off our prayer time. Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. And today's devotion is titled, Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your healer. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Father is Jehovah Rapha. Jesus is your healer. By his stripes, you are healed. Think about those words, says the Lord. Meditate on them. Tell others about the healing power in the atonement. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And my word to you is healing. Healing for your body when you are sick, says the Lord. Healing for your soul when you're hurt, says the Lord. Healing for your relationships when they are broken, says the Lord. I am revealing Christ to you as your healer. Receive the fullness of your salvation, says the Spirit of the living God. Come on. God wants to heal you everywhere it hurts. He came to bind up our wounds, however they came, through whomever they came. God wants to heal you. And I firmly believe that some of you 
many of you, all of those who would press in with me in faith are going to receive freedom from church hurt. And some of you need to stand and intercede for others who have experienced church hurt, who don't want to come to church anymore. We cannot let the enemy win. The enemy comes to divide the church. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we must stand against him once and for all, all for one. We are part of one body and we must not allow the enemy to win. So I believe today, 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 Many of you are going to break free of this vicious cycle of going to church, to church, to church, and finding more hurt, more hurt, more hurt. I believe today God is going to ship something in you. Heal it. Excavate a, a, a deep wound and, 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 and pour out the, the, the healing balm of Gilead into your soul. Amen. Scripture references are in the devotional. Pick up your copy of Mornings with the Holy Spirit on my website at jenniferleclair.org or wherever you find books online. Now the prayer starter from the devotional. Thank you for a revelation of the atonement. As I am faithful to meditate on the word of God for healing, release your power into my body, my mind, and my life to heal all those things that need healing and restoration. Help me walk in divine health. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Father, we give you praise today because you are our healer. You are the God who can bring complete and total freedom from every pain, every problem, every sickness and disease, even our mental health. You are concerned. You watch over us carefully. So we praise you. We exalt you over the church hurt. We exalt you over the bitterness. We exalt you over the emotional pain that we have sustained in your church. Father, we thank you that you are bigger than our pain. You are greater than our heart. You are the most high God. So we exalt you. We glorify you. We magnify you because you are the one true living God. We will keep our eyes on you so that you can keep us in perfect peace. You are awesome in power. You are mighty in battle. Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, today to draw near to you because we know then you will draw near to us with your healing power. You will draw near to us with revelation that opens our eyes. You will draw near to us with a comfort that the world can't match. Father, would you forgive us? Would you forgive us for any way in which we have held a grudge against those who have hurt us? Lord, we don't want to walk in unforgiveness toward those who hurt us in the church. So we forgive. We forgive. We forgive our pastors. We forgive the apostles. We forgive those false prophets. We forgive those who wronged us in the church. We forgive our brothers and sisters in Christ who weren't there for us, who didn't include us, who, who all out rejected us. We ask you, Lord to help us, give us the grace of forgiveness because we need to forgive completely and wholly so that we can heal. We know that we can't begin to heal from the church hurt until we forgive the ones who brought the church hurt. So forgive us for stewing in our own juices. Forgive us for engaging in thoughts of bitterness and resentment. Forgive us and help us to flip the script and be like Jesus when he hung on the cross and he said, forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they do. Lord, we choose to forgive. We choose, Lord, we choose by force of our will to forgive those betrayals in church. We choose by force of our will to forgive those who neglected us in church. They should have been there. They should have prayed for us, but they didn't do it. And maybe, Lord, you led them not to do it. And maybe, Lord, we were too dependent on people. So whatever our part was. In the church hurt, if we came in offended already and got double whammy because we were already hurt when we came in, we were already offended when we came in and we were just walking around with a chip on our shoulder and we got more hurt. Lord, forgive us for our part in this. We're not going to act like we are perfect because we are not perfect. And Lord, while you're at it, would you forgive us for any church hurt that we caused to anybody else? In the name of Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, for any harm that we've brought to others. Lord, we want a clean slate. 
We want your bride to be glorified. We want your church to be unified. So we choose to let go of the offenses that happened, that occurred in our lives because of people in the church. We know that the church is not perfect, but you are a perfect God and you're coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. So help us, Lord, to get the spots out, to get the wrinkles out today, to release all those who wronged us, to pray for those who persecuted us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. You know us better than we know ourselves. And we need your healing touch in our lives today because of the deep emotional pain that came from church hurt. You know all about it. You know all about it. You know all about it. You are in touch with our infirmity. So we need you to come into our hearts, God, and bind up the brokenness within us that came from church hurt. Bind up that broken heart, God. Bind it up, God. Heal it. Pour your healing balm of Gilead. God, we have been battered and we have been bruised emotionally. Sometimes it's hard to breathe because the pain is stabbing our heart. It's just too much. God, would you help us? Would you heal us from the church hurt in the name of Jesus? Lord, you saw how we trusted them with our souls. You saw how we shared our hearts with them only to be stabbed in the back and stabbed in the front and stabbed on the side. God, would you help us? Help us, Lord. We don't know who else to talk to. We don't know who we can trust. We don't know in whom we can confide, but we know that you are a trustworthy God and we know that you already know what we're thinking. You already know what we're feeling. You already know what they did. You are the one who understands us through and through. You understand our pain because you felt the pain of betrayal. You felt the pain of rejection. You felt the pain of walking misunderstood. So you are well able to identify with our pain and to heal it, not just to identify with it, but to heal it through and through top to bottom. God help us heal those searing wounds that have shattered us on the inside and broken our spirit to the point that we don't want to go back to church anymore. God, help us deliver us from the deep anguish that our soul is moving through even now in the name of Jesus. Heal our emotions, heal our wounded hearts, heal the anguish that is deep inside. It's too deep for words, Jesus. Lord, flood over every part of us, God. Soothe us, God. Heal us, God. Root out the resentment even now. Root out the bitterness even now. Root out the hurts and wounds even now. Deliver us from this evil, God. In the name of Jesus, sometimes the anger on the inside feels like a volcano that's ready to erupt, God. Help us to be slow to anger. Help us to release the anger. Help us to release the anger. Help us to release the wrath. Help us to release the bitterness. Help us to release the pain, God, and just give it to you in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Fill us with your peace and your hope and your joy. Shepherd us, God. Lead us beside green pastures, God. Make us lie down beside the water, God. Help us to rest in you. Help us not to to take vengeance on our enemies, but to pray for them. They didn't know what they were doing, hurting people, hurt people. Would you help us, Lord? Would you help us, Lord? Because we're trusting in you. You are our only good. You are the one who is worthy of our trust. Lord, sometimes it feels like our hearts have been shattered into a thousand pieces because of what happened in the church, the way we were treated. And we don't know which way to turn, but we know we can turn to you. We're not going to run away from you because we were hurt in your church. We're not going to neglect your word because the word was preached wrongly and it caused us emotional damage. It was used as a weapon to condemn us. We're going to still believe who you are and to believe your word, Jesus. Sometimes we feel like we've got no strength and and everything in our life is just falling apart because of the pain, the emotional pain down deep inside from this church hurt. God, have mercy on us and help us see us in our affliction and deliver us in the name of Jesus. Father, I know that your word says you will give strength to the weary and hope to the distressed. And Lord, sometimes this church hurts, makes us just feel so weak. We're so distressed. We're stressed out. We're anxious. We're afraid to step foot into another church because of what happened last time. We walk in with an attitude because we've already been hurt and we don't trust anybody. God, that is not how we want to live. We do not want to live paranoid. We do not want to live upside down. We want to live right side up. We want to live righteous. God, would you help us? God, help us to wait upon you. 
Help us, Lord, not to try to soothe our own church hurt, the pain of the church hurt, soothing that church hurt by conference hopping, choosing, soothing that church hurt by, by Netflix binge watching God. Help us to stop trying to self-soothe when you are the soother, you are the healer, you are the one. Help us. Your word says you'll give strength to the weary and hope to the distressed. And Lord, we feel weak. We feel beat down by this church hurt. We feel overwhelmed some days by this church hurt. The pain of it all, God. We're distressed by it, God. So give us strength. Help us to overcome. Help us to forgive day by day when the feelings come back, when the thoughts come back, when the memories come back, when the anger comes back. Help us to release it to you quickly. Help us to release it to you immediately. Help us to release it to you once and for all and not take it back. Help us to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Jesus, help us. Holy Spirit, help us. You are our helper. You live on the inside. So help us to wait upon you. Help us to abide in you. Help us to rest in your love because your love is a perfect love and your love cast out the fear. I see that, Lord. The Lord shows me some of you are afraid of being hurt again. It's the fear of getting hurt. The fear of getting hurt because you've been hurt so much, hurt so often, hurt so frequently. It's like a pattern. You start to trust and then you get hurt. So Father, the name of Jesus, we repent for the fear of getting or being hurt again. We repent. You've not given us a spirit of fear. Perfect love cast out fear. Those who fear have not been made perfect in love. So we ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, to forgive us for being afraid, too afraid, too afraid, so afraid of getting hurt again in church that we just don't go, we just don't connect. We just don't relate, we don't fellowship. When your word tells us not to forsake the assembly, the fellowship of ourselves one with another. We're supposed to go to church, so God, would you forgive us for being afraid of being hurt again in the church? And Lord, would you deliver us from this evil now in Jesus' name? We renounce fear of getting hurt. We reject the fear of getting hurt. We are not going to live paranoid, wondering what church is going to hurt us next or who in the church is going to stab us in the back. We refuse to live that way. That is a bondage. That is a bondage. We are not going to live with chains, shackles, fetters. We are not going to live this way, but we are going to live trusting in you. We're going to trust in you. So deliver us from the fear of church hurt in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver us completely and thoroughly up and out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for setting us free from the fear of church hurt. I thank you, Lord, that you renew our strength so we can mount up with wings as eagles and soar once again. We don't want to be spiritually stunted. We don't want to be uh, uh, backsliders. We want to move forward to the increase of your kingdom of and of this peace. There shall be no end. Lord, you promise in your word to heal the brokenhearted and to restore those that are hurting. So we ask you to heal our shattered hearts from this church hurt. And restore to us the joy of our salvation. Lord, would you, would you restore to us the joy of our salvation? Lord, the joy, your joy is our strength. And we need strength for the journey of inner healing. We need strength for the journey of deliverance. We need strength to forgive day by day when the memories come back. We need strength. So help us to remember the joy of our salvation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, and the memories, those painful memories of church hurt that creep in, that crop up at inopportune times, that derail us and distract us, that bring us back to the place of pain from which you delivered us. God, we're asking you in the name of Jesus to heal those painful memories from church hurt. Lord, sometimes we just go back in our minds to a place from which you've brought us and these memories come back to haunt us. And Lord, we don't want to relive the hurt and we don't want to relive the pain. We want to be free once and for all. So heal us from these painful memories of church hurt. 
Lord, we are not perfect. And I know we've hurt people too, but we believe that you died for our sins to pay the price that we ought to pay. So we're not going to uh, allow old pains, old church hurts, old wounds to, to continue to fester. We're not going to walk in the guile of bitterness. We're not going to be angry and hateful and full of resentment. God, help us to forgive those who hurt us continually. Every time the negative emotion comes up, every time the painful memory comes up, help us to quickly, to quickly, to quickly forgive them in the name of Jesus, never meditating on it, never giving it a thought, never talking about it out loud and giving it life. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to stop thinking about the painful memories of the past and concentrate on all the beautiful things that you've done for us. Help us, Lord, to cultivate an attitude of gratitude, to be grateful for who you are and what you've done and what you're going to do. Despite the church hurt, all of your promises are yes and all of your promises are amen despite it all, despite what we've been through, despite what we walk through. Your promises are still yes and amen. So help us, Lord. Help us to focus on you. When these painful memories begin to spring up, help us, Lord, to fix our mind on you and what you did and the work of the cross. Help me to be more like Jesus. Holy Spirit, conform us into the image of Christ so that we can forgive quickly and not allow the root of bitterness to spring up within us, defiling many. In the name of Jesus, teach us how to love like you love. Teach us how to love like you love. Teach us how to love like you love Jesus, how to forgive like you forgive, how to pray like you pray. Heal us of every negative emotion in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Take away the bitter feelings of anger, the bitter feelings of resentment, the bitter feelings of betrayal, and show us how we can live again fully alive. You died to give us a life in abundance to the full till it overflows. But the enemy came in through people in the church to steal, kill, and destroy. But we're not going to give him the satisfaction. We are not going to give him the satisfaction of staying down and out. We're going up and over, over the barricades of church hurt, over the memories of church hurt, over the pain of church hurt. We are going up and over. So teach us how to love. Teach us how to love. Lord, teach us how to love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, share this with somebody. Just quickly share it on your timeline. Share it via Twitter. Share it via Messenger. We're going to keep praying. I need everybody on one accord. And let's keep praying here. Amen. You're ready to keep praying. Keep praying. Hat drop those hashtags for me. Mornings with the Holy Spirit. Hashtag Jennifer LeClaire. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father, now we take authority over every demonic cycle in our lives that would cause us to continue making the same mistakes with regard to choosing churches. Father, would you help us in the name of Jesus to stop staying in churches that we know are toxic, thinking we can pray them through only to get wounded again? Father, some of these issues are issues that we are we are we are bringing into our lives through patterns that need to be broken. We keep thinking we can fix the pastor. We keep thinking we can fix the church. We keep thinking it's going to be different this time. But we find ourselves in a perpetual cycle of church hurt. And we're hopping from one church to another church. And it's affecting our spiritual growth because you say that we will bloom where we're planted. But that means we have to be planted. We have to be planted in a church. You've not called us to hop from here and there and everywhere looking for a perfect church because there is no perfect church. We're not perfect people, but you are a perfect God. So we take authority right now over this assignment to keep us perpetually hurt by the church, by the enemy leading us and guiding us into churches rather than you leading us and guiding us into churches. For many false prophets have arisen in these days and they will continue to arise. There are many pastors who don't care a thing about the sheep. They're called hirelings. And the enemy wants to order our steps to another church where we can get hurt once again. But Lord, we say interrupt this cycle, interrupt this pattern, interrupt this circle, this vicious circle in our lives where we keep finding ourselves in churches where we get hurt. 
And if we've gotten healed from our hurt, we shouldn't be carrying the hurt. So we shouldn't be having the chip on our shoulder. So we shouldn't be setting ourselves up for rejection. But the enemy sets us up to get us upset. So we take authority over this cycle. We take authority over these issues. We take authority over this assignment against our life to keep us isolated. We break the powers of every enemy assignment to isolate us from the church, to get us into sin by forsaking the fellowship of the saints. We break the powers of this assignment to get us bitter toward the church of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. We break this assignment to keep us alone, isolated so that the enemy can beat us up. We break this assignment now in the name of Jesus. And we break every curse that's been spoken over our life with regard to our church. You know, let me pray teach you for a moment. Many years ago, I left a church. It was very toxic. It was very abusive. And I ex suffered extreme church hurt. And before I left, they made a curse on me. And after I left, they made another curse on me. They'll they said this, they said, you will walk around forever and never find a church where you fit in. They said, if you leave this church, you're going to walk around. You don't fit in anywhere else. You're never going to fit in anywhere else. You're never going to find a church to go to. And then after I left, they announced to the church that I had turned my back on Christ, that I had walked away from Jesus and they were cursing me. And some of you, come on, there's deliverance in the house today. There's emotional healing in the house today. There is curse breaking in the house today. Are you with me? And they cursed me and I had to break that curse. There was many curses they put upon me, word curses. So father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that the curse causeless shall not land. And we take authority over every word curse that was spoken over our church life in the name of Jesus. We take authority and break every word curse that was spoken over our spiritual growth in the name of Jesus. We take authority and break every word curse that was spoken with relation to spiritual stagnation in the name of Jesus. We break, I hear this, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. Lord, we break the curse of the misfit over our lives in the name of Jesus. We will fit in where you send us and we will bloom where we are planted. We reverse every curse spoken over our church life in the name of Jesus. We we break every curse, every word curse that, 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 that indicated that we would lose our anointing when we left that church in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over every curse that people put on us in the church. And we ask you to deliver us right now from the effects of it in the name of Jesus. I see somebody's eyes are opening right now. Somebody's eyes are opening right now. You're starting to see, you're starting to remember. Oh my gosh, they did. You didn't see it as a curse, but that's what it was. Words carry the power of death and life. According to Proverbs 18, the power of death and life are in the tongue. And some of you, when you left, when you left hurt, the, I remember this one man left our church, uh, not my church, but the church that I was in that was so abusive. And, and they said, everybody that left the church, including him, they said he's rejected and he'll walk in rejection all of his days. And you know what? That man went from church to church. He actually came to my church one time and quickly left because he had such a spirit of offense. There was a curse over his life to be offended at the church. So we break the curse of rejection. We break the church of, we break the curse of offense against the church in the name of Jesus. We break these curses, God. Some of them are self-imposed because we refuse to forgive and we release the tormentors against ourselves. Lord, we, again, we, once again, we bless those who curse us. We bless those who curse us. We bless those who hurt us. We bless those, Lord, we ask you to forgive them and we ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are a mighty God. You are a healer. You are the glorious, victorious warrior God. So we push the enemy out of our lives now in Jesus' name. We will not continue to nurse our wounds. We will not continue to speak of the hurt as if we're a victim. You've not called us to be victims, but you've called us to be victors in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we ask you, we ask you, we ask you in the name of Jesus. I pray for all those right now who have not gone back to church because they're hurt. Many of you are in good churches now and you've been healed, but stand with me for those who aren't. Many, many people have been hurt in church, Lord, and they've walked away from their faith. 
completely. Lord, you see how many people were hurt in church and they've never stepped foot back into church again ever. And that is not your will. So we pray for all of those who are now marginal Christians or carnal Christians or backslidden Christians or those who have been so embittered with you, Jesus, that they've walked away from the church. They're, they're prodigals. And we ask you to bring them home. Lord, we ask you to open the eyes of those who were hurt in the church and Lord, help them to see that all churches are not going to hurt them. Just because they had a bad experience with one doesn't mean they're going to have a bad experience with another one. God, can you give them the courage? Give them the courage and lead them and guide them to the community that you want them to fellowship with so that they can be loved on and filled and restored fully into their destiny because you've told us in your word that every joint must supply. And the enemy is trying to isolate them and keep them held down and held back and out of their high calling. And he wants to derail their destiny with church hurt. But Lord, open their eyes and give them the peace in their heart and help them to see that there are churches out there who will not hurt them. And also help us all to see that the reality is hurting people hurt people. And yes, there are times when we're going to get hurt in church. It's just going to happen. But help us, Lord, to see that we can work through these issues. Sometimes we can work through these issues. It's not always just leave a church because you got hurt in a church. Lord, help us to grow up spiritually and understand that we have to work through certain things, running away from everything that hurts us or harms us or everyone who says something or does something we don't like is not the answer because there is no perfect church. And since there is no perfect church and since we're not perfect people, Lord, would you teach us conflict resolution skills so that we don't have to feel obligated to leave a church that we love because one person in the pews did something harmful to our souls. Would you help us, Lord, to learn the principle of Matthew 18, that when a brother sins against you, you go to your brother. And if he won't, if he listens, you've won your brother. But if he doesn't listen, take one or two more with you to confront them. And then, that, and then take it to the church. Would you help us to operate according to your kingdom government in the realm of church relations, people to people relations? And we know, Lord, that the enemy uses some people against us to harm us, to hurt us, to destroy us. There is a such thing as people warfare. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle. And sometimes we're wrestling with people who are influenced by demons who want to steal, kill and destroy. So help us to discern when people are operating in wrong spirits and begin to guard our hearts and pray for them before they before they pray P-R-E-Y on us. Help us, Lord. We glorify your name. We magnify you. You are the one true living God, the only, the only, the only God. You are the God who heals and saves and prospers and restores and reconciles. So we give you all the glory today because there's no one like you, no one who can heal us over and over again, no one who can restore us, no one who can bring a, a vindication. Your vengeance is yours. And so you will repay us. We will not seek our own repayment, but we we will trust in you. We will trust in the lover of our soul. We will trust in the lifter of our head. We will trust that when we, when you lead us to the next church, that we will find a true community and knowing that none of us are perfect and we will get hurt again. We will not get, we will not be afraid of it, but we will walk free and we will walk in love to the best of our ability in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Come on. Isn't that good? Come on, that's a good word right there. I don't care where you're from. That is a good word. So many people dealing with church hurt. So many people never going back to the church. So many people bitter toward, you know, God himself for what has happened. We need to be a people who are quick to forgive. We're going to get hurt. We're going to get hurt. People that you love are going to disappoint you. Pastors and apostles and prophets are going to disappoint you. Nobody is perfect. So we want to walk in the spirit of Christ, which means we need to walk in the spirit of humility, gentleness, patience. We need to walk with the fruit of the spirit, not just the gifts of the spirit or the power of the spirit, but also the character of the spirit. We want to do this for his glory. We want to be people who can pull others up and say, yes, I suffered. I suffered church hurt, but I got over it. I got over it. I got over it. God helped me. God is good. He's good all the time. Guys, if you're in South Florida, come to Awakening House of Prayer. We'll take good care of you. We're not perfect people, but we do love you. Amen. Get plugged in with us if you're in South Florida.
You can also watch our services online. You know, some people, you're in a place where there's not any kind of church that teaches what you need to learn. And, you know, sometimes you need a supplement. You go to the church you're at and that's wonderful and you have community and that's awesome. But sometimes, sometimes there's just not any place you can go. Sometimes you're in a season of life where you're traveling a lot or you're stationed overseas or, you know, you're in life transition. You can't find a church to go to. We are uh, able to help in all those situations. I want you to check that out. You can watch our services free free online. It's free to register every week at ahop.online, but you can also partner with us officially, become an official web church member and choose to go deeper with us with the virtual healing prophecy deliverance rooms, the virtual community, the virtual life group, the virtual prayer line, the virtual pastoral advice is all there for you. If you choose to tap into that at ahop.online slash web church, go deeper with us, but those services are there for you every week. God is good. God is good. God is good all the time. Remember, today's broadcast is brought to you by the Sears Invitational. The Sears Invitational. The Sears Invitational is coming up in just, I think it's seven, is it eight days? Nine days? There's five seats left. If you're flying in, please fly in. Get your ticket now. It's not too late. Globalpropheticcenter.com slash Sears. I'm teaching four uh, in-depth classes on Seer topics, dreams and visions and things like that. As well as the Q and A's, you can ask your questions. As well as the uh, seer activation exercises, as well as the seer impartation service at night. Now, remember that's at globalpropheticcenter.com/seers. But we also have the mid-year prophetic update. My, I'm going to release prophetic words midway through the year, and you can watch that for free online. But you have to register at jenniferleclair.org slash events Go on over there and see the stuff that's over there. We've got the handkerchief service. We've got all kinds of stuff over there. Most of everything we do is free. Sometimes you got to come here to get it. You know, all the school, of the spirit classes are free to people in South Florida. Amen. Everybody else around the world, you have to sign up at school of the spirit TV. We've got the school of prayer, We've got all kinds of stuff over there. So get involved in what's going to bless you. Amen. And remember we're in the, we're in, uh, we're in day six of the uh, praying for the nations five minutes a day we can pray for five nations for seven nations takes about five minutes a day and you can still start that if you missed out on the beginning you can still start it now at awakeningprayerhubs.com slash nations awakeningprayerhubs.com slash nations i'm glad cindy that you enjoyed that 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 helped you praise god hello phyllis hello tammy Hello, Chantel. You said you've never been hurt in a church. That's good. She says, because I've never had any expectations from anyone in a church. You know, just a requirement. Are they pointing me to Jesus? Yeah, you know, sometimes people put too much um, emphasis on what a pastor should do. You know, the pastor's job is not to come tuck you in at night and, and let you call him at midnight or her at midnight and answer all your problems and pray all your prayers. So some sometimes church hurt is... Um, not realistic. <laughs> and sometimes guess what? Pastors get hurt too. You mean times I've been betrayed? You know how 23 times in the since 2019 I have had a knife stuck in my back and it was all church folks. And I'm still standing. So if you can still stand, if I can still stand, you can still stand. Amen. Ed Blackwell, where you been? Where's my awakening prayer hubs leaders? Awakeningprayerhubs.com. Join the movement. Join the movement. Join the movement. Guys, make sure you're following me. Let me forget. If this is providing value to you, if you're liking these, make sure you officially follow me on whatever platform you're on, Clubhouse, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Make sure you're following me if that's going to help you. If it's, and, and tag somebody. You know, Right now, if you know they're dealing with church hurt, uh, tag somebody. You know, If, if it's going to help them, let them know about it. Amen. I don't, you know. I, I just think sometimes people need an outside voice to share. Maybe you've been telling them some of this stuff that I've been praying and, and maybe, maybe they'll, maybe they'll hear it from me when they don't hear it from you. But where's my awakening prayer leaders? I see Rita Santiago, Dominican Republic. Amen. Thanks, Gerard. Did you finish your orientation, Gerard? Hello, Gwen in Brisbane, Australia. Tammy, God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, and amen. You did finish it? Okay, good. I don't necessarily see all that. All right, good. 
Well, praise God. If you did, you should have your email address and you should have gotten the link to sign into the Facebook group. But I don't see you in there. So that's what I was asking. So you have to click all the boxes and, and everything at the end in order for us to get a notification. Amen. 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 Look at all these prayer hub leaders. Awakening Prayer Hub is a prayer movement. Uh, City Jacobs, Mike Bickle, Lou Engel, James Gall, many others are standing with us as we press in to see uh, souls saved, re churches revived, and nations awakened. If you're just coming in, you can listen to the replay. I prayed the whole, the whole thing today on Church Hurt. We're going to be ending it in just a couple of minutes. Uh, Japan, God bless you. You met me in Dallas. Well, thank you. God bless you. Join the movement Awakening Prayer Hubs. We're in, uh, we're technically, I think, one of the 84 nations, but we would be in 90 nations if the people would finish their orientations. So <laughs> make sure you finish those orientations. And we're really serious about prayer. We want to see you break through personally. We have inner healing tracks and we have things translated into many languages and more and more languages all the time. So check that out as well. AwakeningPrayerHubs.com. Well, Gerard, why don't you email the office then? Because I can't possibly help you with that, but I'm sure that somebody can. Amen. If you sign into a Gmail account, guys, you go to gmail.com. You put in your username and your password, and that's how you do it. It's super simple. Uh, they, they've made it so simple. You Back in the day, signing into an email was like a, terrible. You had to do this and put it on your phone and do this, do that, do that. It's very difficult. But now they've made it very, very easy. Amen. God is good. Guys, I want to pray for you before we head out today. And I want to give you an opportunity to sow. If this is blessing you, if this has helped you, then please consider sowing every once in a while. That will really help us. We need your help. Almost everything we do through Jennifer LeClaire Ministries is provided to you uh, without charge. And therefore, we have to hire staff and editors and designers and all these people uh, to do all these things. And so please consider sowing every once in a while. If this is helping, if this is blessing you, you get more out of things when you sow into things. And so you can do that over there at uh, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You, go, you can become a partner there. You can sow a one-time seed there at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can use the Cash App. Cash App is dollar sign prophetic books, dollar sign prophetic books. You can use the PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the Venmo. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the Zelle. Zelle is info at jenniferleclaire.org. And I don't know if I'm forgetting anything, uh, but you can also use the Facebook stars and the YouTube stickers. So this is blessing you. This is helping you help us to reach more people. And do guys pray about all these Facebook blocks that I've been getting. It's been very frustrating. And I've been around the mountain with them so many times. And they just say, well, no, no, no idea why that's happening. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so please do uh, help me out by sharing this before we pray. Share it on your timeline. Share it via Messenger. Share it via Twitter if this is providing value to you. We want to make sure that we reach more people. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are a good God. There's no one like you. And I lift up all of my Awakening Prayer Hubs leaders, the Awakening Web Church members, the Awakening House Church leaders, and the Awakening House of Prayer leaders in the name of Jesus. I lift up the School of the Spirit TV students, the Ignite Networking Company of Sears, all those who read my books and all those who are subscribed to my social media channels in the name of Jesus. Lord, I say, bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory. Let your hand of power rest upon us to keep us from evil and causing pain in Jesus' name. Lord, we say this is a day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, protect us as we go. Help us walk in your perfect will. Help us to see things that we've not seen before, discern things that we've not discerned before. Help us to pray without ceasing, God. Bring home the prodigals. Deliver souls from evil. Save people in our family from the pits of hell, God. Heal bodies, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Restore marriages in the name of the Lord. Lord, prosper us in everything we do. And more than anything, help us to sense your presence in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, I love you. Have a breakthrough day. I'll see you on the other side.